This video demonstrates the sand equivalent test. Conducting this test provides a measure of how much clay is contained in an aggregate sample. The test is completed on aggregates used for asphalt paving mixtures and also for aggregates used for microsurfacing projects. The sand equivalent test is important because aggregates that contain a large amount of fine dust or clay can have an adverse effect on the performance of an aggregate and asphalt mix. The extra dust or clay prevents the asphalt from properly binding to the aggregate and that may cause the road to break down much faster. North Dakota uses alternate method 2 and performs two trials of the test and then averages the results of the two tests. The sand equivalent test is the only test that requires you to always round up the results to the next higher number. First, collect the equipment to conduct the test. You need a pan, trowel or spatula, water bottle, damp cloth and plastic splitting cloth. You also need two 3 ounce sample tins with covers. You need a funnel, graduated plastic cylinder, weighted foot assembly, timer and a rubber stopper. In addition, you need some calcium chloride solution, an irrigation tube and a mechanical sand equivalent shaker. Next, obtain an aggregate sample and then reduce it to testing size. The sample should be approximately 1,000 to 1,500 grams of unwashed minus number 4 material. Place the sample in a pan. If the sample is dry, you will need to add water and thoroughly mix until it is damp enough to hold a cast. If the sample is already damp, you may not need to add water. In either case, the sample must be moist enough to hold a light cast when squeezed in your hand. It is important to thoroughly mix the sample so the moisture content is uniform. After you have determined the sample is at the right moisture content, cover with a damp cloth. Make sure the cloth does not come into contact with the sample. Let the sample sit for a minimum of 15 minutes. This allows the aggregate to absorb the moisture. Next, pour the sample onto a non-absorbent splitting cloth and mix. Mix the sample by pulling from corner to corner. Mixing the material this way is similar to the test method for reducing an aggregate sample on a quartering cloth. After thoroughly mixing the material, the sample should be in the center of the cloth. Take the 3 ounce sample container and place a hand on one side of the pile and the sampling container on the other side of the pile. Push the can through the sample to your hand on the opposite side. Then firmly push the sample into the can with your hand to cause it to overfill. Strike off the material above the top of the can and cover. Next, remix the sample, pulling the cloth from corner to corner, bringing the sample over the top of itself. Take the second tin and repeat the procedure, bringing the sample container and your hand together, pushing the material into the sample can. Strike off the top of the can. After preparing the sample, pour 4 plus or minus a tenth of an inch of calcium chloride solution into a cylinder.
add the material from one of the tins into the cylinder. Take care not to lose any material. Sharply strike the bottom of the cylinder with the palm of your hand to remove any air bubbles that may be trapped in the bottom of the cylinder. Now, let the sample stand undisturbed for 10 plus or minus 1 minute. Securely place the stopper on the cylinder and shake loose the material from the bottom. Place the cylinder into the mechanical shaker for 45 plus or minus one second. After the 45 second shake period, remove the cylinder from the shaker and then remove the stopper, being careful not to lose any material. Then, add calcium chloride solution up to the 15 inch line. When doing this, wash any material that may be sticking to the sides of the cylinder walls. When flushing the sample, push the irrigation tube down to the bottom of the sample in a twisting turning motion while filling. This flushing and twisting will wash the fines from the bottom of the sample and bring them into suspension. Continue this procedure until you are close to the 15 inch mark. When nearing the 15 inch mark, be prepared to pull out the irrigation tube at the same time the cylinder fills to the 15 inch mark. Let the sample sit undisturbed for 20 minutes plus or minus 15 seconds to allow sedimentation to occur. At the end of the 20 minute sitting period, check the sample and determine the clay reading. If the reading is in between two marks, record to the next higher number. Next. Take the weighted foot assembly and carefully lower it into the cylinder. Take the sand reading. Again, if the reading is in between two marks, round up to the next higher number and then subtract 10. 10 is the distance between the bottom of the weighted foot and the reading indicator. Repeat the process on the second sample. When completing the sand equivalent test calculations, round the results of each test to the next higher whole number. Then, average the two numbers and again round the average up to the next higher whole number.